With the basic font properties out of the way, let's have a look at properties we can use to affect text layout. This group of properties affects how text itself is laid out on a page. These are properties specific to text, providing control over things like text alignment, text indent, letter and word spacing, and vertical alignment. The text align property is used to control how text is aligned within its containing content box. The available values are left, right, center, and justify. They work pretty much the same way as they do in a regular word processor application. Let's take a look at how this works on a web page. Here's the web page that we'll be working on for this example. I have a little bit of CSS that's already been applied to the page, and I'll show you that in just a moment. For right now, let's concentrate on the section of the page that deals with alignment. If we look at the four paragraphs that describe the various alignments available on text, you'll see that each paragraph has its own unique class applied to it. These will act as hooks so I can style these paragraphs in different ways. If we take a look at our style.css file, you can see that I have some basic styles. Many of these are things that we covered in previous exercises. I do have some areas on the page which start with comments. These are the areas that we'll be working on for this particular lesson. I'll start off by applying the text align properties to the four paragraphs. The one with a class of left is going to text align left. The one with a class of right is going to text align right. And then we'll use center and finally justify. Left, right, and center are pretty straightforward. Justify will make the text spread out, varying the gaps in between the words so that all the lines of text are the same width. You need to use justify carefully. Sometimes it looks really good and sometimes it can look terrible, especially when applied to a paragraph with lots of long words in it. So when you use justified text, just take into consideration the actual text that's going to be displaying and make sure you test it to ensure that there's not too much space in between the words. As you can see, left align, which is the default alignment, lines the text to the left edge. Right align does the same thing, but aligns text to the right edge. Centering is going to center the text. You need to be careful using center alignment on blocks of body copy. Center alignment usually works best for headings and smaller paragraphs. You do not want to use it extensively on long paragraphs or long passages of text. The text indent CSS property sets the length of empty space or indentation that is put before lines of a text in a block. If we look back in our HTML page, you can see that I have a section that starts with a header of indentation. This contains two paragraphs, both with classes of indent. Let's go into our CSS and add the actual values to the property. I'll come to this rule right here and we'll specify text indent and let's start off by adding three M's. If I add this value and save my page and we refresh, you can see that now the first line of all of the paragraphs are going to appear indented. Indenting paragraphs is not as widely used on the web as double spacing paragraphs. This is a more common method of displaying paragraphs, but every once in a while you may want to create indentation. You can either use pixels, m's, rems, or percentages. So if we change this to 5% and save and refresh our page, you can see that the indentation is going to adjust. These units will get larger or smaller depending on the width of the page. The letter spacing and word spacing properties allow you to set the spacing between letters and words in your text. You probably won't use these very often, but you might find a use for them to obtain a specific look or to improve the legibility of a particularly dense font. They can take most length and size units in regards to the values. On my webpage, I have a section that is titled Letter Spacing and Word Spacing. I have two paragraphs. The first one has a class of L space. The second one has a class of W space. 
if we jump into the CSS and add some values for the letter spacing and word spacing, we can see how this will affect our page. I'm going to go ahead and specify five pixels for letter spacing, and let's use the same value for the word spacing. We'll save the page, and if we come into our browser and refresh, you can see what happens in the paragraph that is being controlled by letter spacing. All of the unique individual characters are now spread out by five pixels. This can decrease the legibility of the text, so be careful when using this. In regards to the paragraph where we used word spacing, it's doing the same thing but on words. Obviously the impact is not quite as striking as what's happening with a letter spacing. It is worth noting that in addition to using positive values, we can also use negative values. If we use negative values, the text may become unreadable in the case of the letter spacing paragraph. The word spacing paragraph is still readable, but it's very difficult to read. You're probably not going to use these sorts of values very often, but I did want to point out that it is possible to use both positive and negative values. You would probably just want to use a very low negative value, like maybe negative one pixel, if you wanted to tighten up the spacing between your letters. This would be something that might be useful, depending on the font that you are using to render your text. Certain fonts might have an overly large spacing between letters, you can tighten them up by using the letter spacing. That's going to look something like this. The final text layout property that we're going to talk about is the vertical alignment. Vertical alignment is a little bit different because it will vertically align an inline, an inline block, or a table cell box. You can use the vertical align property in two contexts. You can use it to vertically align an inline elements box inside the containing box. This would commonly be used to align an image to a line of text. Let's see what this looks like. For this part of the demonstration, I have a section that's titled Vertical Alignment. This contains a paragraph with a class of VAlign, and inside that paragraph I have an image. The image is followed by the text seahorse. If we go into our CSS and we try to target the V align paragraph and let's set the vertical alignment to middle. If we save and look at this in the browser, you'll see that no change has occurred. The reason why is because the vertical alignment will only affect inline elements. So what I really need to target is the image that is a child of the VAlign paragraph. If we look at our HTML, you can see that the image element is a child of the paragraph. The paragraph has a class of VAlign. This is an example of specificity, where we're specifically targeting an image that is a child of some parent element with a class of VAlign. If we look at the page in the browser now, you can see that the seahorse text has now appeared vertically aligned in the center of the paragraph box or block element. So in this way, we can control the alignment of the text in conjunction with images. Now this looks fine with very short text, but let me show you what happens if we do the same sort of thing with a longer block of text. I'm going to come into my HTML, and what we'll do is we'll copy the image element, we'll paste it in the beginning of the paragraph of text, and then let's just add our class of VAlign. The CSS is already in place, so I really only need to save my HTML document. If I come and refresh the page, you can see what happens. We're getting the same sort of behavior, but it's only affecting the very first line of text. This is not the way to get the text to wrap around an image. In order to do that, we have to use some different CSS properties. We'll be looking at those in some of our future exercises. The final way in which we can use vertical alignment is on table cells. 
Just to get you familiar with what we're working with, I have a table. It contains one row and two TD or two cells. The first cell has minimal amount of text and the second cell has quite a bit of text. By default, the vertical alignment in tables is set to middle. So the text is vertically aligning in the middle of its cells. If we go into our CSS and we already have a selector for table TD, if we add the vertical alignment here and we set this to top, you'll see when I look in my browser, the text now aligns to the top of the table cell. There's no change in our second table cell. And that's because the text is taking up all of the available space. Even though vertical alignment takes a plethora of properties, baseline, sub, super, top, text top, middle, bottom, text bottom, initial, inherit, and you can even enter a numerical value. You will most often use top, middle, and bottom. As you can see, this group of properties affects how text itself is laid out on the page. Most of these properties are specific to text, except for the via line property. These allow us to control things like letter spacing, word spacing, and alignment of text in general. Utilizing these allows us to have a lot of control over the small granular text elements. This provides us with more traditional typographical control, such as kerning and tracking. Utilizing these will allow you to ensure that your web page is set up exactly how you intend it to be.